from Houston and then, you know, other places around Texas. So that just tells me the range you guys have. Yeah. Well, I'm also the oldest of eight kids. So there's a lot of range inside Whoa. of my family too. It's a lot of Sheesh. energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's what, a big crew. They, they couldn't get it right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There, there was some like numerical. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a big crew. We don't, we don't have to have family reunions because every time we get together, it feels like one. Can imagine? Is there anything better than a trip getting ready? Nope. For a long journey where our podcast released a new app and searching for a faith fiend. New, new fixation. fixation. Giving this a subscribe is the same sensation. Started with the day ones. They gave us room to support the season. Could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here for a reason. Notification bells. Text some friends. All to let you know. Check your Bluetooth. Connect. Talk your wisdom. I know. Welcome in, everyone. Episode 188. My jam is Earl. With our guest, Nathaniel Earl. Nathaniel. Oh, this feels good already, man. Like, I, I immediately knew that guy had to come on the pod. So thank you for joining <laughs> us. Thanks for having me, Zanato. Pleasure Nathaniel, to be here. Nathaniel, I just want to start with something. I was going to save this for the radio show, but I, I got to know. Nathaniel... You seem like a very comfortable person in like any setting. Now, I want to know, has anyone ever told you that? Do you think that? And then I got to know, where does that come from? Mm, well, I appreciate that. First off, thank you very much. I think maybe it comes from actually having crippling anxiety and working through it kind of systematically. Um, maybe, maybe it's a, a, a developed comfort. But that is, ah. that is a, a kind thing. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody say that before. Well, I observe. I observe. Um, <laughs> I saw you. Uh, I saw you with Daniel Fears out on stage. Uh, I saw, again, what you project. You're right, man. <laughs> you could be the worst. But what <laughs> I saw, what you project to us. So I'll say this. Nathaniel, and I'm not judging. This is just for the audience. Just and then, you know, for my research, of the people that you've texted, I'd say the last 10 people that you've texted, mm -hmm. I'm going to say they don't all look the same and they don't all have the same uh, background. Uh, I, I think the last 10 people you've texted are very diverse. Ethnicity, uh, maybe even sexuality. How, how close am I? I'd say you're pretty spot on. I can do a little inventory. Uh, <laughs> I gotta know. I gotta let's know. See. This is. I, yeah, I mean, I, so Daniel Fears is in there. Uh, okay. Another young guy I'm producing, one of my business partners, somebody, an older gentleman from a mastermind group that I'm a part of, uh, my partner, Allison, yeah. and my younger brother, Evan. So, I mean, yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a little roster in there. Now, the reason I say that, and I want to take this a little further, is. You are a music producer. I, I don't want to paint you into a corner and just give you a label. But one of the things you do, you produce music. Correct. Right? Yeah. Music producer and composer. Oh, oh wow. Okay. We're coming back to that part. Let's stick sure, with the, sure. produ the production. Okay. People come to you. And what they're thinking is, I got this. I got this sound. I want to do it. I know they come to you different ways, but I'm just going to be in this vein for a second. I got this sound, Nathaniel. Or maybe they call you Nate E, Big Nate. I don't know what they call you. <laughs> but they were like, hey, hey man, I, I really want to do this. Now, that could go two ways. You could beat them over the head and say, you do know I'm Nathaniel Earl, right? You'll do what I tell you to do. Or, <laughs> like, I didn't even get through that one. Or you'll say, bro, let me, like, spill it. What are you talking about? What do you want to do? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? And, and we like that, Nathaniel, because I think you're the latter. And I think artists, I think people, we like that. And so that's why I gravitated to you because I saw that and I was like, this is this guy. Again, it's my podcast. I have one who I want, but I know who I wanted. Where, where, where does that flow with you when it comes to producing? Someone comes to you. How does that normally go? How do you feel like it goes? Well, first off, thank you for wanting me. I feel I feel honored <laughs> and wanted. Um, yeah, I, well, I think you make a, a a good observation in in what 
what kind of differentiates like somebody who is bringing value to an experience as a producer, as a collaborator, et cetera, yeah. or somebody who is taking value from an experience, right? And I think as, as a producer, it's sort of a niche thing to sell to somebody this day and age because there are so many people who are self-produced. I mean, like I have, this is my studio here and it's in my, my house. Like it's, yeah. it's not difficult to self-produce. So as a producer, I sort of have to convince somebody that I'm worth hiring. Yes. And so what I try to do with that is I really try to get inside the world that somebody's developing with this piece of music or this collection of songs they're doing. I really try to inhabit that space and understand the underlying message of what they're trying to impart, what they're trying to say and hear it and see it, like hear it through their ears, see it through their eyes and then bring out the things that I know how to bring out from my years of experience in the, the, the music, the field of music. Um, because they're like the thing that differentiates me from somebody who's brand new self-producing is the, the like length of time that I've been doing it. I just have techniques that can expedite getting something out or, or make something a little bit more um, articulate or clear. Uh, not saying that I'm better than other people. It's more just, you know, like if you've been gardening for 14 years, you know how to garden a little bit better than somebody who just started. They may eventually be able to whoop your ass in gardening, but at yeah. this moment in time, yeah, um, I have something to offer that the brand new producer doesn't. And so I guess that's a really long way of answering your question and saying no. that I very much do try to uh, humble myself and inhabit the space that the artist is trying to uh, populate or trying to create. See, uh, it, it, we're gonna we're gonna peek behind the curtain here, uh, listeners. I told Nathaniel I, I have a bunch of uh, rules, guidelines for the pod. I don't write them down. I try to remember them and get them out. I did forget one, Nathaniel. And what I always say is. You can never be too long-winded. It's a podcast. <laughs> I, <laughs> I told point, you we would hold for an hour. Uh, if they're already a fan of mine, a follower, then they know my style. And if they're someone in your circle, again, they just want to know. They can pause it, go in the house, do something, come back out, get back in their car, and continue listening. So, uh, yeah. See, I did forget one, but we got that out. And now that's a little peek behind the curtain for those who are listening. Nathaniel, when you said that, it took me so many different directions. I'm just go with two. Mm -hmm. Do you ever turn people down? Because what Nathaniel, I heard about you, right? Like I know this, I know Rodney and Rodney has some amazing stuff. And he's like, yeah, big Nate did it for me. I'm like, who is that? And then I see you and I'm like, man, you don't look like no big Nate, but I know I really want to get something out. But this is my first time in a studio or really putting this down. You don't have patience for that. Do you, Nathaniel? Like you tell me maybe to go somewhere else. Well, it, it really depends. Like I'm, I'm working with a band right now and it's their first, first time ever recording and they just became a band very recently. Um, and, but, but there's something about them that's like uh, really genuine and really transparent. They, they don't have big egos. They're not you know, they're not the young band that thinks they're going to take over the world. They they know what they're trying to say, and they're really confident in saying it. And they, they do it articulately, and they're very humble, and they, they listen to my feedback without question, which therefore, like, encourages me to be uh, just uh, more selective with my feedback, you know, because yeah. uh, it, it encourages humility out of me. Their humility begets my humility. So I, I would definitely work with people who are brand new. In fact, sometimes I like doing that. It just depends on the person and the situation. Um, yeah, you know, money is obviously a factor. So, like, if somebody's brand new and has the ability to pay, then I'll always consider it. If somebody's brand new and is looking for the hookup, I'll probably have another recommendation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two studios over, buddy. <laughs> uh, now I mentioned it before about you, you being the controlling producer, which. I doubt anybody ever really wants that to be your uh, the, your reputation. I, I don't know. I guess you're just like really accomplished and everyone knows, well, he does it his own way, but you're going to love it, I guess. But what about what about that other person I kind of hinted at earlier? Yo, Nate, you're going to do whatever I say, man. Like, don't even mess with it. Don't even mess with it. I want it to be like this. What about that artist that's a, maybe a little standoffish, 
a little too protective. Come on. Okay, you said you'll work with the rookie, <laughs> but will you work with the 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 stingy artist? I, I again it really depends on on the vision and the person. You know, if Frank Ocean oh. came to me, somebody notoriously like very particular, I would say yeah. yes, of course. Like I will sacrifice myself for you, Frank. But oh, yeah. it, de it depends on who it is, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I think the opportunity, I, I, I'm more particular about the, the quality of the person than I am the quality of the music for sure. Because yeah. I think every, everybody has good music inside of them, right? There's, there's yes, just sir. certain techniques to unlock that. But there are certain people who I would do just about anything to work with, uh, Frank Ocean among them. So <laughs> you're, you're proving exactly what I said at the start, because I gave you that. It was just a, a wacky scenario. But in hearing you say that, I like that you said that, Nathaniel, because you made me think about the, the, the problem with my example. That person may not be doing it intentionally. Maybe, maybe, maybe every other, every other path hasn't been fun for me. Um, and, and, you know, I got, I got some baggage, uh, maybe unintentionally, maybe I'm coming off guarded, but I, I, I just, I, I just, I know I, I really want to spread my wings with this one. And you made me think about that. Was that, yeah, kinda, maybe they've been hurt. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe they've been hurt. Maybe they've been screwed over by other collaborators, producers. You never yeah. know why somebody is coming in with that sort of perspective until you do a little investigation. I think like there's a, there's a quote that I really love. Uh, oh man, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's basically like the sure way to keep a man in everlasting ignorance is to have contempt prior to investigation. Ooh. And it's, it, it, hits. it hits. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to, I wanted to go to that second, question off of where you took me before. Okay, so you got a band. Uh, we talked about Daniel Fears. I'm gonna get him on the pod. <laughs> it's coming, everyone. Um, All right. But like, how do you, how, do, how does a music producer stay diverse enough? Now, this is kind of what I was saying before. Like, you kind of gotta dip your toe into this and that and this and that, right? How the heck do you pull that off? Because I think it can enhance your artistic ability, your 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 production value. Uh, do you, it, it might make the artist feel more comfortable. How how do you do that? Is that something that you kind of have to do? Sample different sounds, listen to different things. Absolutely, um, that's a that's a really great question. Really, just a really great like idea to and to think about. Um, for me. I'm, I'm an avid music listener and I'm kind of a, a, a major nerd when it comes to all things music and music technology related. So yeah. I sort of compulsively can't help but expose myself to new types of music or new types of equipment and expand because I get bored really easily and I'm always looking for that thing that I haven't ever imagined before that sort of develops a new node of thought that I can though then go and inhabit, you know? Like it's like when you're playing a video game and you like clear the map and then you just <laughs> yeah. spend all your time over there for a while. Yeah. Um, like I just worked on this film score. I know you had uh, Holly uh, from, yeah. they took us back on here and I, I wrote the, the score for that film. Oh, yeah. And when she asked me to do that project, uh, it was very intimidating for me because of the subject matter. And also just because the, the style of the film was so different than anything that I'd ever worked on. So I spent a lot of time listening to like pre-Civil War call and response music. And then I spent a lot of time listening to contemporary West African folk music. I just built like a giant playlist and like submerged myself in it for weeks to, to yeah. sort of download that information. And it, it did, it definitely expanded me as an artist and it gave me, uh, I don't know, I, I loved being in that space for a while. And music is sort of, for me, music sort of creates an environment that I live within. And so I listen to ambient music a lot because it creates a relaxing environment. Yeah. But getting to spend a couple weeks in West African folk music was something I probably wouldn't have ever done if it wasn't for that project. And now I can't get enough of it. So. Oh, well, yeah. I think, yeah, it is, it is coming over. It's, it's taken over, man. I, I keep 
every now and then I'll, I'll hear something and, uh, you know, someone in my circle will be like, oh, man, yo, this, this Afro beat is killing right now. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. Did not hear that. Thank you. <laughs> like, it's just like so many people are coming to me and they're like, oh, this is new. You haven't heard of this one? And I was like, no, I haven't. It, it's just, I don't know. That's not happening many other places. I think there's a lot of excitement right now. To, you, to your point, um, I think West African, I think Nigeria, I think – uh, that's what I'm getting a lot of in my circles. Uh, a lot of people are coming to me like they're finding stuff and they're bringing that excitement. And mm. yeah, it, it, to your kind of like with you, it's making me go dive for some things. I got to have something in my back pocket ready. Be like, oh yeah, well, I bet you haven't heard of this one. Right, <laughs> right. <pull> out. <laughs> <laughs> got to have that rebuttal on standby. <laughs> yeah, I got to be ready because because you don't, no one wants to feel like the old guy, the out of touch guy is like, oh no, no, I'm, I'm not up on that. <laughs> what? Oh, man. <laughs> you don't strike me as, as the old guy who's not up to date. <laughs> it's It takes a lot of effort. I coach you sports. So I'm, I got my, my brain, my bald head baking out in that sun. But I could be focusing on the cool stuff. The, the cool stuff you get to do. The music hey, coaching stuff, coaching you sports is pretty cool, man. I, oh. I, I, would, I would love to do that someday. I don't know I what I would it. coach, we'll, but. We, we won a championship this weekend, went all the way down to New Braunfels. I live north of Austin. We went down there, kicked butt, went undefeated. All right. And, and it was just – it's just so incredible, man. To, That's amazing. To Congratulations. Season. Yeah, thanks. It, it was, it's, it's fun. It's great. So that brings me to the other point. Have you ever made too much music? Like when, when Holly came to you, like in your mind, you're like, all right, I'm going to do 30 songs or, <laughs> well, 30, that's a lot. Or, you know, I know I'm going to go, you know, not make 30 songs, but, you know, get 30, 30 items together. I don't, I don't assume to know how you do it, but have you ever had too much and you, maybe you, you come back at the, at the start of the project and say, all right, so here's what I'm thinking. And you maybe write it on the, the dry erase board. And they're like, <laughs> Daniel, can we get, no, bro, that's too much. Had that ever happened? Yeah, I mean, I think the was on with on the topic of this film. I actually wrote a song that I was like, "This is going to be the the centerpiece of the film musically." Like yeah. I, I was dead set on it, and I kept trying to figure out a way to fit it in, and and it kept not fitting. So I kept writing other things, and oh, that works, that worked really well, that worked really well. And then I got to the end of the film, and there was this piece of music that I'd written that didn't belong anywhere in it. <laughs> and so now I have this piece of music uh, and it's, I, I mean, it's based, it's, it's attributed to the film and there's like a brief snippet of it at the very beginning, but yeah. that's an example. I, I think most of the time when I'm working on a project, there is music that goes unused. Um, okay. But a lot of that material gets recycled later. Like I'm working this, this piece of music right here actually is a piece that I wrote probably 10 or 12 years ago that yeah. I, had forgotten about and now I'm almost finished with a, a new song from it. So, you know, wow. the, the, the stuff sticks around and gets, re, gets yeah. reused except for the bad stuff. The bad stuff falls away and there's plenty of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's like, you know, what's on my paper and you made me want to come back to something else. But my next question was, have you ever missed on a project? Oh yeah. The bad stuff's like you, I, let's say, um, I don't know. I I'm thinking of something that's like big to me. I don't know if you know, there's this movie called above the rim and that soundtrack is just so amazing. It's like all over the place. It's got a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but I would imagine there's stuff that they left on a cutting room floor. There's stuff that they, they, like you said, maybe forgot to get in. Maybe there's some bad stuff. Maybe you don't have to be as clear. You could leave us a little bit of fog. But <laughs> what happened, man? How'd you miss on the project? I mean, I was, it, it happened a lot more frequently uh, longer ago. I think yeah. I failed, I failed so many, so many times that I've kind of figured out how to bypass it before it becomes failure. Like if I start yeah. to feel it getting off rails, I'm like, okay, we'll just let it go and we'll refocus. Ah. But I mean, I've, I had a, I had a band that we would, you know, we'd play downtown in Austin and there were some good moments, but I was a really bad singer at the time. And, 
and I would get really nervous before I'd go on stage. So I'd drink a bunch and then I'd get up there. And, you know, when you're, when you're hammered and you're a bad singer, then it oh. just makes you a really bad singer. <laughs> so I'd say there was a good couple of years in there that I would consider a miss. Yeah. I also, the very first film that I ever wrote music for, I think I was 19 or 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was, a, I was, a, it was a TV show um, that okay. never, never came to be, but ah. They said, can you do the music for this? I said, yeah. And I spent like two weeks working on like what I thought was a masterpiece. And and I brought it over to the director, all nervous, you know, on my flash drive. And we plugged it in and we listened to it. And he just sat there like this and didn't really say much. Mm -hmm. And then it finished. And he looks at me and he's like, well, I can't use any of that. Oh. <laughs> he didn't even give me a, a moment of, of uh praise or anything it was just like well that was trash <laughs> but um but it was i yeah. it was very bad music it was okay uh, <laughs> yeah but like you said you, you said 14 years it's it's about the process and right it was more frequent back then not now and you've uh, developed the ability to see when it's going off rails uh, yeah listeners He's just telling you, go get somebody with some experience if you want to produce. <laughs> Don't or, take or just or or get a trusted group of people that you that you want feedback from. You know, yeah, not, not just people that are gonna that are gonna tell you you're great or people that are gonna look for things that they don't like on purpose, but like find yes. those people that you really trust the opinion of. Feedback is immeasurably important. Now oh, that's man. You, you and I, man, we're throwing alley-oops to each other. My next question was, just because you mentioned it, so I put it under this one, bad stuff. So you said bad stuff. How do I know, Nathaniel, that you're just a, a, a hard critic on yourself? What, what makes something bad? How does it go off the rails? You're experienced, bro. Two years ago, if you did something, that's a 12-year veteran. It was probably good. But no, here you go. No, that's not good enough, Earl. I think you talk to yourself <laughs> and you call yourself Earl. That's not good enough, Earl. You got to do better. So how, what, I'm going to start now. What's, <laughs> what's, what's bad? Like what makes bad? How do we know you're just not, you're just really hard. You might be really hard on yourself. What's that process like? Like how do you figure out something's bad? Well, you are right. I, I am hard on myself. I, I try to, I've tried intentionally to, uh, be kinder to myself, uh, okay. but but objectively bad is when something becomes too much about you. At least that's my oh. my opinion, right? So oh. especially in a collaborative environment, you could have an idea that you feel really strongly about, right? And this is you. This is collaborator, say, right? And so yeah. if this is your strong idea, and you just take it all the way over here, oh, like, yeah. to me that's that's bad. There could be good in that, you know. Like I think. It's 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 kind of impossible to say if something is good or bad in art because right it's it's art right? it's interpretive, yeah. But bad is missing the point, and uh, okay. so for me in my past, like I you know that that first film I was talking about at that first show, like I it was a really simple uh, show about an undercover cop who was a stoner in Austin, and I wrote like this really dramatic like heavy classical music to it. And so that's yeah. bad because it totally misses the point of what the story is. The story was supposed to be very deadpan and and maybe slightly depressing, but not like operatically dramatic. So that's bad, okay. you know. Okay. All right. I mean, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to go back. Okay. All the way back. We need to know a little bit more background. Nathaniel Earl where are you from? Where did you grow up at? I have spent a lot, a long time in Austin, Texas. Um, but when I was, I was born in Houston. Oh. I think I lived there for three or four months. So not a lot of memories because, yeah. you know, three month old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I moved around, like I lived in a few different cities in Texas. I lived in Boston, Massachusetts for a few years. Whoa. What years? Uh, like ninety. Three and ninety six or ninety seven. I was also yeah. really young. So okay, okay. I used to live in Boston too. Oh no okay. way! Well, the yeah, big dig well, was still happening back then. So oh wow. Okay, sorry. 
Sorry, you didn't have to flex on me. You were way back. It was done by the time I moved there. Oh man. Well you got to, you got to enjoy it. Yes, I did. Then, yeah. On motorcycle too. Oh, all right. When Screaming we were there, it was those like tunnels. What kind of bike? What kind of bike? It was a Hayabusa. Oh, damn. Yeah. You really were screaming then. Jeez. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's amazing. nothing like dragging uh, one o'clock in the morning, dragging me. Just oh my you could gosh. judge me. 70 miles per hour and just leaning, just a pack of us just leaning. You because you can hear your pipes, it's just echoing yeah. off the oh man, through the tunnels it, and all it, that. It, oh, it was man. very successful, man. It was it was great for us. <laughs> I believe it. I, I used to ride too. I had a like an 80s BMW, uh, that was pretty quick, but not nothing yeah. like a Hayabusa. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it wow, you were down south and then y'all went all the way up north. Yo, what. I knew that name, Nathaniel Earl, sounded a little too fake. What y'all running from, <laughs> Nathaniel? Y'all made that up. Y'all on the run? The hitman? Uh, they after y'all? <laughs> vam vampires. We're vampires. My family. It's it's out. It's too late. You heard it first on Donato. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh crap! Now that I figured it out, uh, uh, don't 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 come for me, <laughs> please. I won't. I won't. Uh, I'm a vegan oh, you're a vampire. Nice vampire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Considerate Vampire. Hey, there's a new movie. Tell tell someone. The, the Considerate Vampire. Yeah, that sounds. I'll bet Dennis Quaid is the the, the lead in that. Could you imagine <laughs> a Considerate Vampire? Like you're you're starving. Uh, Everyone else is like, bro. It's like three in the morning. Sun's coming up soon. You haven't eaten yet. Well, it's just that everybody. I met this nice couple. They just got engaged. I didn't want to eat them. There's this old lady. <laughs> That sounds kind of like that. What we do in the shadows. I think I feel like there's some of that kind of energy in that show. That movie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but I, I like the. See, you're you're helping me. You and your family with the moving around. I think that lends to that diversity. You kind of you got to fit in. You got to adjust. There's no more adjusting than going up to the Northeast. You and your peeps from Houston, like, and then you know other places around Texas. So that just tells me the range you guys have. Yeah. Well, I'm also the oldest of eight kids. So there's a lot of range inside Whoa. of my family too. It's a lot of energy. Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's what, a big crew. They, they couldn't get it right. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, I don't know. There, there was some like numerical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a, it's a big crew. We don't, we don't have to have family reunions because every time we get together, it feels like one. I, I can imagine. Okay, uh, <laughs> you sidetracked me, but we're gonna sure. go back. But let's okay. stay right here. That's a lot of. I don't know how old you are, but I'm gonna say that's a lot of nieces and nephews. Do you know all your nieces and nephews' names? Uh, yes, I do. I've oh. I haven't met the so there's only three nephews right now. Okay. Um, okay. Probably there's probably more on the way, but it's <laughs> it's yeah. it's Logan, Levi, and Layton, and. Layton wow. was born this year in January, so I haven't met him yet. Yeah, but uh, but I'll, I'm hopefully meeting him this summer. I'm gonna. They all live in Colorado, so I'm my loving plan is it, to get dude. up there. The three L's. I like what they're yeah. doing here. Yeah, very very classy. My sister is an artist, and and uh, I would imagine there is some artistic intent behind. Oh yeah, yeah. Behind that, I naming. love people. <laughs> with, I love names, like names and me. Uh, I I I know when I. Get some free time. It's gonna be a hobby. I'm gonna I I'm gonna fully dive in. But just now, I just I just flirt with it. You know, I like to see a person and kind of kind of guess and see. And then I love it when I ask someone, like, so what's the what's the story behind your name? And I'm like, uh, I you know I don't have one. I was like, well, you need to make one. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have boring. a name. <laughs> <laughs> I say that. I I have the audacity to tell people they're boring, Nathaniel. And then if there's a great story, I'm like. That was an amazing story. Um, you're not living up to your name. <laughs> you're boring. <laughs> the name's awesome. But you're <laughs> Nathaniel, I'm telling you, I, I, you have me saying too much already <laughs> on this episode. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. We get 188 for. <laughs> episodes in, and this guy ruins it for me. People are realizing. <laughs> okay, so I want to know. Bear with me if you were brown bagging it. But I, I don't bring this question up all the time, but I do like it because we kind of like to, 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 to learn about people. Senior year, you just got your lunch tray. You're coming out 
of the lunch line. You're hitting the cafeteria. You're looking all around. There's a bunch of open tables. Where do you sit? With which group? Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know. I think I, I tend to be somebody who moves group moves around in groups quite a bit. Yeah. Like, I, I like that feeling of, of, I like the transient nature. So, you know, it'd probably be the one that had the girl that I had a crush on. Ah, that I one. like it. But, uh, but it would probably be a different table tomorrow, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to give her too much attention. Right. Or, I mean, I probably involuntarily would have and then been asked not to sit there again. The next day. <laughs> Here's the poem I made about you last oh, night. See. <laughs> see, you know what? I'm going to reveal something else, Nathaniel. You're bringing this stuff out. Man, you're so easy to talk to. But, Nathaniel, I was the dude, like, if there was, a, like, for Valentine's Day, if you could send a rose to somebody, I did it. If, if it was a dollar to send a rose to to Earl's sister that eventually moved to Colorado, I'm sending her a rose. And a lot of times my name might not have been on it. It's a secret admirer. Right. And uh, with a, I guess, threat that I'll reveal myself at a later date. <laughs> I, I, I have had plenty of uh, secret admirer notes of my own distributed through the elementary school space. Yeah, I mean, you got to put it out there. You got to see. Uh, I don't know. We're romantics. <laughs> what can we do? I, I <laughs> certainly am. See, now you're reading me. That's great. Because <laughs> I, I I just realized that, yeah, of course, that's why I did it. <laughs> well, it turned out great for me. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, that works great when you're happily married. For, you said 14 years. I've been 14 years in this game, and man, I'm doing a great job. So, awesome. all right, I want to go to this next thing. Mm -hmm. You said you want to do this music thing. Did you lead with that? Did you tell your mama? Did you say, yo, ma, I'm be making <laughs> some music? And I know she said, baby, mm -mm, you got to do something different than that. You got to go be a lawyer. It's bad enough your sister's out here in Colorado being an artist. <laughs> right. Well, I'm the I'm the oldest, so I I led the uh, led the charge and in, into uh, uh, non lucrative professions. Yeah. But I yeah I think you know my dad was a uh, was a jazz drummer. Um, oh. Wow. And so music was in the family. It, it was interesting because I think he he encouraged the musical exploration, but he also being having been in the in, in a excuse me, having been in it in a professional capacity for as long as he had, he also was like, it's not as much fun as you think, man. Like, <laughs> do your thing, but maybe you should look at some other stuff too, you know? Um, so it wasn't, there was no real resistance to me doing that as a career choice. Another thing is uh, about having seven siblings is, you know, they don't have enough time to like really fuss over in one individually. And so by the yeah. time I was old enough, they had other people to worry about. They're like, that's what you want to do. Go, go do it. Just, just don't, don't ask us for money later. You know, we're on to the next kid. On yeah, to the next exactly. Kid. That boy's gone. <laughs> I jazz drummer. So, uh, your dad's going to see this, but I got to ask it. I got to know. You don't like jazz now, do you? It's probably got way too much jazz growing up, huh? Oh, I love jazz. I, I don't listen to it a lot now. Um, yeah. I, I, I think because I've, I've listened to it so much throughout my life. I mean, and jazz is an infinite universe of musical exploration. Yes. But I, I just, I don't listen to it in a recorded format as much as I used to, but I, I still do love jazz. I go, when I go out to watch music, I'm often watching jazz. I'll go to the elephant or, or Parker or something. Um, so. Yeah. I'm a big Latin jazz fan. My dad played a ton of that. Growing All right. Up. Yeah. So, <laughs> I go down that path. Um, but I'm it helps fan. me. I'm I'm a Latin dancer. So uh if you want to if you want to see some cha-cha-cha, throw in some Latin jazz and I got you covered. All right, <laughs> let's pull that up. <laughs> Where's my, my wife at? <laughs> but I'm not shy. We're, you're gonna need to see me out in Austin. That uh, dancing is what I do. All right, so then I want to know then just your playlist, your personal playlist. 
today, I don't know if you were in the house all day, but I'm going to say you, you, you went out, you had a 20 minute drive. Are you listening to your work the stuff you're doing for others? Are you, do you, are you taking a break to see what's on the terrestrial radio? Do you do a little satellite and you just scan? How does that work for you? Uh, it, it depends. I think I, I try not to listen to the music that I'm working on when I'm not working on it. Yeah. Because it can just get caught in a loop, you know. I could imagine. Um, I'd say most of what I listen to right now is ambient music. So like music yeah. that's just very like meditative. Um, yeah. Very calm. Like I have like multiple ambient music playlists because because I'm working on music so often when I want to not work on music, I still want to listen to music, but I want to listen to music that feels more like like laying on a floaty in a pool as opposed yes. to like hiking through the forest, you know. So uh, ambient music provides that sort of uh, reprieve, that relaxation. Um, I also listen to... I listen to podcasts. I like I like hearing ideas. I listen to some audiobooks. I'm trying to think if there's any like album that came out recently that's really rocking my world. Uh-huh. Um let's see. Dying dying to know that. It because <laughs> I uh well the, actually my friends, my friends, uh this band in Austin called Nolo. I used to produce them a while back. They just put out an album called Versions. Uh huh. Um, and it's a really, really amazing album. Um, and I've it's been it's been fun to watch their progression. So I've I've been listening to that album, and that album is is rock. It's it's experimental. It's got some pop elements to it, but it's it sort of feels like a three dimensional world, uh, and it's really high energy, which is the opposite of the ambient music that I listen to. So it's a nice yeah. juxtaposition, you know. I got three that we're gonna stay in the in the. The musical realm. Can you chill, bro? Like, can you just, <laughs> can you just not work? Like, it's the summer and you're working hard, but Logan, Levi, oh, I don't remember the third one. Like, the three, uh, what, what? Layton. Layton. I was going to yeah. say Layton. And I was like, no, it's not Layton. It's close. It's close. But, um, hey, you got to go out and see your sister. You got to go out to Colorado. Which is You're the right best that. time to go in the summer. First time I ever went was the summer. People, go. And I snowboard, but you want to go during the summer. But uh, can you just go out or the whole ride or flight out? You're going to be like, oh, man, I'm going to pick up some music here. Can you, can you just be like, all right, go away for eight days. Enjoy my nephews. I'll be back to it. I can. I've. It's been a, something I've had to learn how to do. There was a long okay. time where I didn't know how to turn work off, and it was actually really damaging for my personal life. Um, yeah. But over the past year, year and a half, I've spent a lot of time, like really intentionally, creating space that doesn't involve work. Now, do okay. I always respect that space? <laughs> no, but at least I'm trying. So yeah. it's 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 a marked improvement from <laughs> where it was a couple years ago, for sure. The first step. In fixing the problem is identifying that you have a problem. Right, exactly. You are aware. How about <laughs> this? Can you not ruin shows or performances? Because I'm like, I'm, I'm calling you up. Yo, Nathaniel, listen, I got some tickets, man. Let's go to such and such. We out there, and the whole time, the thing is like, see that Donato? See, that was a B clef, and he, he should have been an E major or E minor. <laughs> that was just wrong what they did there, and they put it together, and it was like, and I'm looking over at you like, bruh, this is the last time. It, I'm, I'm not asking you to come back. <laughs> Tell me that doesn't happen. It doesn't. Does no, I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty respectful at shows. I'm oh. I'm more I'm more the guy who uh, will talk about what kind of gear they're using than <gasps> the theory. Oh, so I'll be like, oh, that's like a 1970s mo for <laughs> sure. You know. Oh man. <laughs> I'm 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 not the cool nerd. I'm just the <laughs> the nerdy one. No, no, you you said that at the beginning. They weren't listening if they didn't. You said that at the beginning. You said you told us you were you're nerdy about it. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. What about your circle? I bet everybody 
wants to come at you and be like, yo, Nathaniel, I got a recommendation, man. I heard this band or, or I got a cousin or I bet that just runs rampant because everyone's like, oh, I know this dude is a producer, man. Like, ugh. The, does that happen? Like, I think it happens where you just can't even chill. You're at the family reunion with your seven siblings, <laughs> just hanging out. <laughs> and then everyone's everyone's like, hey, man, I got I, I'm writing something or I'm singing with. Does that happen? I feel like it does. It happens a fair amount, but the, the amount of those that actually go from talk into action is like a very small percentage. Oh, okay. so I can field conversations, but you know, there's always that person that's like, Oh, I really want you to produce something for me. And I'm like, cool. Yeah. And then the next time I see them, they're like, you know, I've been thinking it'd be really cool if you produce something. I was like, cool. And you know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not frequent that they, they uh, follow through. Um, so it's not too bad. And then, you know, I want to know, uh, what would be the ultimate item for you right now? And this could change. Five years from now, you could say something else. But there's Donato. This guy just went big. His podcast just like took over the world. And he's making all these connections. And you see me. And then you hit me up. You DM me. And you're like, yo, Donato, remember me, bro? Episode 188? And we like, <laughs> yeah, I remember. Well, um... I was hoping that maybe you could, boom. What are you asking for, Nathaniel? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what I would ask you for. I think what I would, like if I have something that I would really like right now that I don't have, I'd like to work on a feature film soon. I've done oh. a lot of short films. I have yet to work on a feature length film. And I would Whoa. love that. Or a TV series, like something that, that provides enough anxiety to like kill a small animal that that's what i want <laughs> yeah. Wait, you can't just leave that out there so you're flexible you'll take almost anything because the first thing that popped in my head is all right man i go talk to vin diesel for you because you saw <laughs> you saw me on on instagram shooting shooting with uh vin diesel i don't know he's from new york i'm thinking he's a basketball player but we're shooting around at his personal court uh, because his is smaller than mine. It's too much running at mine. Because I told you I'm a big deal by now. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I, got a full I, size. I see it. I see <laughs> I got it. a full size. <laughs> we'll play on his little dinky court. Vin Diesel. Uh, fast. What I don't even know what number we're on. Let's say 21. Fast 21. Would you take that? Are you flexible? Or you you think? I don't know. I that I w I mean I would definitely talk about that. But I it, it's. That's such a specific style. I don't oh. know that I'm. I don't know that I have enough established skill in that space to confidently take on a project like that. But I'd probably say yes and just work on outsourcing it to really good people. You know, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it could have been I'm, a, I'm a very big fan of outsourcing and and collaborating. Like I've had a number of projects recently that I've arranged music for, but then I've brought in other composers because. There's just too much to do, and I'm, I kind of get tired yeah. of hearing my own work too. It's like yeah. I, I would much rather hear what you got, what you got to say. No, I like that. Wow, that's a that's big of you that you would want to one share the spotlight uh, because I'm sure there are a lot of people that are like, "Nah, bro, this is all me. This is all me right here. Like, it's all me. I got it. No, I got it covered." <laughs> right? Me's boring, I, man. Me is boring. I I agree. <laughs> this is why, trust me. Uh, on my radio show, you know, there's sometimes I am by myself, but I really think the best shows are when I'm with someone else, we can bounce stuff off of each other. This pod, I could, I could rant about stuff. I got three pages of, of content for my next live <laughs> or tomorrow I'm on the radio, but I like this. Like, I really like this with you. This, this has been fun, by the way. This has been <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that to the end, but it's my podcast. Do what I want. What you know? You I'm make the rules. <laughs> Nathaniel Earl. So what is the, because I told you I'm a name guy. Mm -hmm. What is the story behind Nathaniel Earl? First well, my name. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, I think, I think my parents had high hopes, you know, so <laughs> they're like, let's give him, let's give him a fancy name. Maybe, it's maybe he'll make fancy boy money. It's uh, so yeah, well, my my full name is Nathaniel Earl Lanningham, 
And, Jeez. Yeah, I know. It's like, uh, when that sounds when like I, you got four <laughs> horses and, and a state out in the vineyards. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and you go I, fox I'm, honey. <laughs> I make gin. <laughs> um, well, so now you know why I shortened it. Uh, it's it's yes, a great name. It uh, is a great name, though. But it's I I just needed to shorten it. I go by Nate typically, but Nate Earl was just it felt like a little duncey. So uh, Nathaniel Earl, it sounds kind of fancy and kind of redneck, and I was like that that can appeal to multiple demographics there. So it, that it was, could. That's the story. <laughs> Not a very good one, but it's a story. No, the the <laughs> Lanningham though, man. Yeah, I, I feel like you're the guy I gotta reach out to and say, hey man, when when can you fit me in at the country club? I gotta yeah. <laughs> I wanna say that I played that course. Come on, man. All right, I'll carry your bag for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a longtime valet back in the day, so I'm I'm a, I'm a bag carrier by trade. Nathaniel Earl Lanningham, that's a dude I would loan money to. Hey, <laughs> let's talk. Trustworthy. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> Until I meet you and I see your music producer and composer, I'm like, nah, I'm good. Exactly. <laughs> I got, I'm smart. fresh out, buddy. I'm fresh out. <laughs> I sent the three L's a, a gift for the summer. I'm out of money because <laughs> you're just going to go <laughs> buy some more equipment. <laughs> right, that's, exactly. That's the stereotype I got. I'm making this up as I go along, Nathaniel. You can stop me, but would that no, be true? I'm, I'm entertained. I'm entertained. Would I would I go buy more gear? Yes, sir. I would I would update a couple of things, but I knew I would it. probably I would probably reinvest it in uh, marketing. Oh no, that's that's good. I was gonna go with a joke that your partner catches you and you're not on your phone looking at scantily clad. <laughs> you're looking at equipment, not equipment, not like in the barbershop. Yo, did you see that equipment? Well, Nathaniel <laughs> didn't. <laughs> Nathaniel's looking at, whoa, that's like a 12 inch woofer. <laughs> I yeah. <don't> know. <laughs> I used to, I used to be uh, like almost addicted to browsing Craigslist for musical instruments, what I uh, buying what I and thought. selling, but it's been years. I've, I've okay. overcome my equipment addiction. Hey, that's two addictions. Two addictions, one episode. <laughs> but you're working through them all. You're you're you're, you're evolving. Baby steps. <laughs> so don't tease you with this uh, Strata Vega that I just my neighbor he just put out in the curb right there. Looks that don't don't tell you about it. Oh my god! <laughs> See, I, this, this guy is gold. Thanks, man. That was awesome. <laughs> that's so <what's> funny. <laughs> All right, Nathaniel, I got to know this, though. You said you're a composer. What the heck? I heard Stevie Wonder. Uh, was it Superstitious? He played like everything on it. Mm -hmm. it. It might be Superstitious. If I'm wrong, someone in the comments, please let me know. But uh, we, we know how talented Prince was, and, and he played a bunch of stuff. How are you trying to figure out how to compose things? Is it, are you thinking the music first or, or sorry, the instruments first? Are you coming up with just notes or are you just like, I, I call it freestyling and you're just like beating on a table and you're just like, bah, 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 bah. oh, I like that. What's hmm. your process? How do you compose? I don't get it. I mean, composing is a fancy word for songwriting. You know, it's just longer yeah. songs or different. Everything's a song, really. Like even if just a, a small melody. I think yeah. I say I say composing because it just looks better on a resume. You know. Oh. But I yeah. I think that the way like when I compose music, I typically start from a place of trying to understand why I'm composing the music. Okay. Because um, the why always informs the what. And so for a film, there's a very easy why, right? Because yeah. the story of the film. For a project of my own, the why is a lot harder. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of the music that I've created recently has been very hopeful because I've gone through a little bit of a, a transformation in my experience uh, that has just instilled me with some hope. You know, I had a pretty dark year last year and 
So a lot of the music I made last year was sort of a like a, a cathartic exercise, like a, a therapeutic treatment of self. Yeah. Um, but I think in, in terms of the technicalities, it typically starts with a piano or a guitar, um, okay. the instruments that I'm most comfortable on. Occasionally, it'll start with a vocal melody, like I'll be driving or in the shower or something. Driving and shower, I've written more songs in those two places than anywhere uh -huh. else, <laughs> especially driving. There's something about like, the, the part of your brain that you need to survive while on the road. Yeah. Like if there's just enough of your brain that's occupied by thought that the rest of it can roam freely without getting into crazy town, you know, yeah. like you can just stay in creative town. And so I've, I've written a lot of music while driving and then I'll hit a voice memo and take it home and then play it on piano or something. But, yeah. but it typically, typically these days there always has to be, some kind of story, some kind of reason, some kind of idea that that is like um, I don't know. I guess, I guess story is the word. It has to it has to have a purpose. There has to be some kind of purpose, right? It's not just yeah. sounds. There's there's emotion behind it. Um, yeah. So. All right. I, I asked you <clears throat> that question earlier when I became big and famous, mm -hmm. how about this? When you're big and famous and we're talking NEL, they got that up in Vegas. <laughs> I got to know you're already working. Let's just say you got a show in Vegas. That may not even be what you want. What I'll is the it. next thing that you would want to do? Would you say, mm. Oh, I've, I've always wanted to have something on Broadway. Uh, I want to lock down Los Angeles. I want to go to Germany. I really like a sound. There's some synth sound that's coming out of there. There's some EDM over in, like, what it would be your next move after being big enough to do a week in Vegas? I don't know. Maybe, like, take an extended vacation. That would be stupid, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. like take a couple of months and and travel sans music. That would be great. Wow. Hit Iceland, hit New Zealand, some yeah. of these island countries. You know, I'd I'd like to explore things that are that are that are rare in a musical form. So maybe wow. hearing like, you know, a, a famous like hearing the reverb inside of a famous uh, cathedral in Spain yeah. or something. That that would be cool. That would be cool. I'm, I'm glad I asked that because you went way different of a direction than <laughs> I thought. I was trying to push you towards getting back out there performing again. Nathaniel, get up on that stage <laughs> and, and put on another show. No, but I like, I, I love that. That's, and here I am. That was one of my questions. Of, do you know how to chill? That, I mean, that sounds kind of chill. <laughs> I, I know how to conceptualize chilling pretty good. <laughs> I know how okay. to. I know how to imagine chilling. <laughs> I'm getting married, and you're my boy. Like we go back. I knew you back in Boston, and we both ended up in Austin after. Just, just bear with me here. Uh, you think you could help me out with like a a wedding song, like a that we could dance to? Because I I'm all out. D does that sound? Does that sound something that you could connect to or would you turn me down? I mean, if you're my boy, which you are clearly, I would do it. <laughs> I've done, I've done some weddings, um, written some songs for some weddings or played music at weddings before, oh. you know, I don't, okay. I don't do it often, but for special right. people, I would love to because yeah, weddings, no, are, that's weddings cool. are beautiful. You know, I think so. And I was, I don't say I was going to judge you, but I, I was going to say, <laughs> but it's kind of like their moment because I, I expect I expected you to say it's it's too much pressure because you know for the rest of their lives that that video that moment and it's gonna be like hey who who gave you guys why is that song and they're gonna be like Nathaniel Earl but no you you jump in there you do it I like it well it's First, it's because there's a good why love love is a great why you know I'll yeah do, I'll do I'll do just about anything for love. <laughs> Well, you know, within reason. There's okay, there are margins. I'll do anything my, uh, within these margins. Got an anniversary <laughs> at the end of the summer. Maybe you could uh, <laughs> you could roll up with up. a big boom box, put some stuff together for me. 
while I get down on the knee and I'm I'm gonna pop the question again. Hell yeah, let's what, do it. What do I what do I use? I'm gonna do that. What do you recommend off the top of your head right now? What do you think I should use in the background while I'm looking up at her? I'm gonna ask her to marry me all over again. What what would you uh, offer me? <laughs> uh, Wait, <let's> go. <laughs> I know this is tough. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, I now that I, the moment has passed, I can't summon anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just not R. Kelly. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that definitely the main draw. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I, I know that. I know that you're an artist. I mean, clearly, but. There's got to be a moment where you you get, for lack of being able to really express myself, you get a writer's block. What do you do? How do you get out of that funk writer's block, whatever you call it? I I uh, practice meditation. Meditation is really helpful. Oh. I think a writer's block comes from sort of like when a computer hard drive is spinning too fast and it freezes, you know, it comes from overactivity, overstimulation, at least it has for me. Yeah. So taking a moment, you know, going outside, going for a walk, listening to music that is unlike anything you've listened to before, calling a loved one, you know, I, th I think anything that is a calming exercise that resets the brain tends to help with writer's block. And also sometimes literally just sitting at the piano with no reason, no intention, just playing notes and just seeing what happens. Sometimes that'll help, sometimes it won't, but a combination of any of those things I mentioned usually gets me through the writer's blog. Man, you had that sucker locked and loaded, man. It's like, <laughs> like writer block runs from you. It, it walks into a dark room and it looks around. Is Nathaniel in here? All right, we good. <laughs> wow, bro. I, I don't I, I don't experience it too much these days maybe maybe just because i i practice those things a lot but i'm fortunate i i used to experience it a lot but uh i've been i've been uh fortunate Nathaniel, you're a badass man has anybody told you this week you're a badass uh i don't know you have that's the most meaningful <laughs> one thus far <laughs> i mean it i seriously thank you i've had a lot of people on and uh oh crap now they're gonna hear this that was the best answer. It really is. Because I sometimes when I ask that, um, I have seen people and I could just, I see like a nervous reaction. Like, like I don't know. It's a fear. I, they, they may even be triggered. Like, I don't know. But, but you seem very calm with it. Goes back to the very point when we started this, this episode. Because now we're at the end. Uh, it just... I like it. You have a grasp. We made the joke about the first thing in, is in, in admitting that you have a, a finding to fix your problem is admitting you have a problem. You have to look at these things. You don't you don't cover your eyes and look away. You 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 do the thing. This is what you do. <laughs> Are you looking at me? <laughs> Are you looking at me? That's what I think. But anyway, that's that's my opinion, Nathaniel. You can't change it. I think you're a badass. I'm flattered. Thank you, sir. You are as well. Oh, well, thanks, man. <laughs> You're coaching happy. championship teams and all that. I mean, well, more I, married 14 years. Those are those oh are amazing God. accomplishments. You see the ring. These girls are seven and eight years old, and the ring is like two of my knuckles. It's like a <laughs> Super Bowl ring that they – what wow. are these little girls going to do with such a – but that's the thing to do. You buy them this big, like, Super Bowl ring. Uh, I don't even know what – They're easier to store than trophies, right? Oh, Yeah. Yeah. Trophies oh take God. up a lot of real estate. Who wants trophies all over the place? I ain't asking my mom for none of those trophies. I hope <laughs> she she does she does follow the, the pie. Yeah. She's gonna she's gonna ship some stuff to me now. <laughs> oh Nathaniel, we, we were gonna oh. end on such a high note. <laughs> now you brought some 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 eggs to me. Scared of my mama. <laughs> Nathaniel, before we go. Uh, I want to know, is you got anything coming up that we want people to come out to? Uh, I, I, I'd like to have some social media so people can follow. And I, I think we I think we made some fans of Nathaniel Earl Lanningham. But how could they keep in contact? How could they follow? 
Uh, well, I, I'm on Instagram at Nathaniel Earl or Nathaniel dot Earl um, on Spotify, Nathaniel dot Earl uh, TikTok, but I don't do much on TikTok. I love TikTok. I don't do much on it. But yeah. in terms of things to go to, actually, you mentioned Daniel Fears earlier, and he and I and a group of musicians that we regularly work with, some string players and a guitarist and some singers are doing a big concert at uh, Bass Hall, which is at the University of Texas huh. on July 13th, I believe. Let me make sure I'm getting the date right. Oh, wow. um, I'm in Dallas that day, so... Well, can we can fly you in. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. it's July thirteenth, and it's it's a it's going to be a really big concert. We've got like sixteen or seventeen pieces of music or something, and we're Jeez. we're doing five world premieres of new pieces from different uh, composers, songwriters. Yeah. Daniel and I wrote a piece together. Um, yeah, it's going to be really fun. So July thirteenth at Bates. Um, it's a part of the Austin Chamber Music Center Festival. I hope I got that right. Um, but that's that's what I would invite your listeners to. Hey, we'll put that out. I, I think I need to make that its own clip. <laughs> all right, <laughs> so, all right. So they could they can get some reminders. Nathaniel, this was awesome. Thanks for coming on. I knew it, and you did not disappoint. So thanks again for talking with Donato. Thanks for having me, Donato. It's been a pleasure. Have a great day. You too.